even in a seemingly pristine paradise, the animal kingdom can still have its struggles. It's true at home in the United States, and it's true here in Costa Rica as well. But just like home, there are good people doing their part to help. And a prime example of this are the volunteers at the Jaguar Rescue Center in Puerto Viejo, who are serving their animal neighbors in an exceptional way. What's happening? Hanging out here with my new friend Cecilia. We're in the Jaguar Rescue Center, and as you can tell, we are in Costa Rica, and it's gorgeous. And you just came off a red-eyed tree frog. We've got a lot to show you on this trip, so uh, why don't we dive right into it, and we're gonna go look at some red-eyed tree frogs that they allow to breed and roam free here at their sanctuary. A good portion of my life has been all about action, which still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation, education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Tenor. All right, so here we are, man. This is really cool because so many of these animals are animals that I've seen in books. And if you're a reptile and amphibian lover or animal lover in general, whenever you get to uh, the country where these animals are native, you get very excited. So I've seen these in captivity, but uh, talk to me a little bit about what you're doing here at the sanctuary for the red-eyed tree frog. Well, what we're doing basically here on our rescue center, we have this beautiful pond that you are seeing in here. This was the idea of Sandro, one of the founders of the rescue center. Uh -huh. He was so into reptiles and amphibian, and he designed this space specifically to attract this kind of animal. So That's all great. of these yeah. rock frogs that we have in here, they are not ill or injured or anything. They are just living here because they are a track. This is a safe place, right. as you can see. Yeah, definitely. And most of the animals, just like if you guys have been following along our videos, uh, back home in Florida, I work with the Bush Wildlife Sanctuary, and we are very similar where we have native Florida wildlife that we protect that are injured. But as you just mentioned, these are not injured. These are animals that just live here. So we're gonna, you know, in, in videos uh, to come, we're gonna meet some animals that maybe have been injured and haven't been able to be re-released. But the goal for you guys is to re-release animals, correct? Exactly, our main goal is to retrieve all the ill, the injured, confiscated, orphan babies animals as well provide them medical attention and reintroduce them back into the well. We reintroduce 150 animals per year on wow. average and since we started in 2008, we reintroduced like 1,200 animals. That's amazing. That's fantastic. That's really great work, man. Well, let's, you tell me that it's okay if, you, why don't you show me how to, to gently pick up the red-eyed tree frog here? Well, as everybody knows, uh, amphibians, they have a very sensitive skin. Right. So this is the first animal that can disappear if an environment can be paired to They're me. indicator animals. Amphibians always tend to be indicator animals. So if there's any kind of pollution that, that hurts their, their environment, oh. scientists, there you go, scientists look towards them uh, to, to give the health of a specific ecosystem. But look at that. Look and I, at love, that. I love how acrobatic tree frogs are, man. Uh, they're really amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and just gently see if he'll come over here. Never actually touched a red-eyed tree frog. We have green tree frogs in Florida. But there you go, let's just see. I'm gonna cross over here. Thank you, Cecilia. This is a lot of fun, but it's it's almost more fun just to see the animal on the leaves and in the in its uh, habitat. Let's see. Oh, that's beautiful. It, the eyes are incredible. I've never been this close to them. It's really amazing. Now I'd like to go over and see. You have a really cool habitat you guys built. Um, that's kind of an open air habitat, but it's got a male and a female over there. Want to go check that out? Yes. Let's, let's go, go see. Yeah. The so there you go. So you guys know that I love creating habitats at my home. I always teach you folks how to make really nice naturalistic enclosures for your animals. You guys are doing an awesome job. You know, this is really fun. So this is a great, uh, I wouldn't call it a terrarium. It's just a great enclosure that isn't even enclosed for these animals. And if you guys, come here, look, Cecilia pointed this out. This is the female, huh? Now you guys don't wake the females up. No. All right, why not? That just explains to everyone out there. She explained to me, but I'll let her well, tell you. Well, basically the female, when these two guys are, we have the female here, the male in here. As you can see, the female is almost twice larger as the male. This is because for several reasons, but 
the female is going to carry the male on her back, uh -huh. right? And she obviously is going to lay the eggs. For this reason here in the rescue center, we prefer to never wake up the female. These are nocturnal animals. Obviously they are active during the night. So during the day, they are sleeping. Uh -huh. So we just leave the female taking this beautiful, beautiful nap. Her little beauty sleep so she can carry around. See, girls are always carrying around the weight of men, huh? <laughs> you girls always have to be tough. I mean, you know, you, she's yeah. been worried about my backpack. You, you, you're too kind. But here's the exciting thing. Celia, talk to me about the eggs. I mean, this is great. These are red-eyed tree frog eggs. These are red-eyed tree frog eggs. So in this lovely pond we have in here, we have lots of frogs that uh -huh. are using this place for breeding. Obviously, we don't have any kind of control of what's going on with the frogs. But anytime we find uh, eggs, these eggs were actually at in a place like this on the, on the reverse of the enclosure. So what we did is, put it in these uh, leaves in here and right. bring it in this uh, pond, in this yeah. place that we have for tadpoles. Yeah, so when they when they hatch, what happens in the wild is usually they'll lay, they'll lay maybe over a stream or over some kind of puddle, and uh, or even sometimes in the plants like epiphytes, like the bromeliads mm. that are growing in the rainforest collect water. So what will happen is when they wiggle out of the eggs, they, f they fall right into there. How long does it take from them to go to, from tadpole to uh, froglet? To, to become a tree frog? To become a tree frog, well, this is going to be kind of the cycle. These eggs in a couple, yes, in seven days or so, they are going to hatch. The tadpoles are going to develop the little limbs yep. in two weeks or so, after two weeks. They are like these super uh, tiny frogs. They still have like the tadpole tail. When, when they are that age, we are actually going to see some baby frogs later. Oh, cool. Uh, in about two months, they are going to climb to the hat, to the canopy, and in two months or so, they are going to develop in this beautiful adult Done. size. All right, fantastic. Very good, man. They've got it all here. So I just wanted to do a little, so many of you were asking about amphibians, and I actually think this is our very first amphibian video on Camp Kennan. So you, the lovely Cecilia, thank you so much. I appreciate it. She's helped me out. We're going to see more of her because we're actually going to walk around this in uh, videos to come and you'll be telling us about more of the awesome. other animals. I love it. Very cool. See you later.